Imagine the glasses in your house are clinking, books are falling off the shelves, and the lights go out and come back on. What is this? The shooting of the next part of paranormal activity? No, it's a magnitude 5 earthquake. Magnitude is the amount of seismic energy that's released during an earthquake. It's measured according to the Richter scale, or the more accurate MMS, or Moment Magnitude Scale, created by Thomas Hanks and Hiro Kanamori. According to the MMS, for example, an underground detonation of a one-megaton nuclear bomb will cause a magnitude 6 earthquake. When the magnitude is increased by 1, an earthquake's energy is increased by 32 times. But can a massive earthquake create a black hole? What magnitude would it take to destroy the universe? And what if we take five cities, New York, Berlin, Moscow, Tehran, and Madrid, and see which of them can survive the maximum magnitude and make it all the way to the earthquake that will destroy the Earth? What is the maximum magnitude? In theory, magnitude 46 would release energy a thousand times the mass of the observable universe. This will be enough to reverse its expansion. Galaxies will change their trajectory and head towards the center of the universe. At some point, the Big Bang will happen, only in reverse. The entire universe, including the Earth and us, will just stop existing. Magnitude 46 will turn the whole shebang into a huge black hole. Scientists don't know if anything can cause such a magnitude in space. Most likely, it's impossible. And that's a good thing. But what causes earthquakes on Earth? The Earth's crust, the outer layer of our planet, is not an integral membrane. It consists of lithospheric plates that don't remain static. Deep inside the Earth, magma is heated, which then rises and collides with the Earth's crust. Magma flows set the lithospheric plates in motion. When one plate collides with another, the energy from that collision causes the fluctuations that we call an earthquake. Let's see what will happen to cities in a minimum magnitude earthquake. New Yorkers are getting nervous. Aftershocks are felt in Manhattan skyscrapers. The fastenings of the Unisphere in Queens can't take it. It breaks off and rolls through the park until it gets stuck in some trees. In the Plaza Mayor in Madrid, the slate spires are cracking. The tourists begin to panic. Residents of panel-built houses in Berlin can hear a terrifying crackling sound. And panic-stricken run out into the streets. In Moscow, church bells start tolling on their own. And in Tehran, a few old buildings collapse. But magnitudes between 5 and 5.9 will have no serious consequences. What magnitude does it take to destroy an entire galaxy? If we take the amount of energy equivalent to magnitude 36, we will get a supermassive black hole with the same mass as the Milky Way has. If it meets another galaxy along the way, that galaxy will be torn apart. Then we'll see stars and planets warping and stretching over the black hole event horizon. The radiation coming from the black hole at that point will disperse the galactic gas clouds. Eventually, the entire second galaxy will be consumed without a trace. But let's get back to Earth and see what earthquake magnitude can cause the first serious destruction. After an earthquake with a magnitude of between 6 and 6.9, the Empire State Building, the Chrysler Building, and the Flatiron Building begin to crumble in New York. The four towers of the Cuatro Torres business area of Madrid start cracking too. 
St. Francis Cathedral is falling apart right in front of tourists. Charlottenburg Palace in Berlin won't survive this earthquake. Neither will the area in which it's located. In Moscow, Cheremushki and other residential areas are collapsing. Their residents are now cut off from the city center. The subway is flooded by the Moscow River. Meanwhile, in Tehran, almost nothing happened. Several cracks appeared on the city's main university building. The earthquake, with a magnitude of between 6 and 6.9, will bring the first serious destruction. We already know the magnitude that can destroy the universe and the galaxy. And to destroy the sun, it's enough to reach magnitude 25. If this occurs, energy will be released in the amount of 10 by the power of 35 megatons of TNT equivalent. The same amount is released in a supernova explosion. Before it explodes, the sun will increase in size to the extent that it consumes Mercury, Venus, and possibly Earth. Then it will lose its shell, leaving only the core, a white dwarf star. When the nucleus accumulates enough mass, 1.44 of the sun's mass, an explosion will occur, equivalent to magnitude 25. It's terrifying to imagine what would happen to the Earth in an earthquake of that magnitude. Fortunately, earthquakes force is limited on our planet. It depends on the length of the fracture between the lithospheric plates and the plate's ability to store built-up energy from a collision. Therefore, the maximum possible magnitude of an earthquake on Earth is 9.5. But even a much smaller magnitude is enough to destroy cities on our planet. All of New York's brick buildings, including Brooklyn Heights, are falling into ruins. The famous Brooklyn Bridge collapses, broken in half. Subway tunnels are being filled with debris from collapsed roofs. People trying to leave the city by car can't control them due to violent tremors. In the capital of Russia, Moscow's city skyscrapers are being demolished. Two deep fractures appear in the central and southern parts of the city. The city divides into two parts. In Tehran, the Azadi Tower falls. And the most earthquake-resistant building in the city, the International Tower, can't withstand the tremors of such a force and splits in half. Madrid and Berlin are no longer on the map. They couldn't survive a magnitude 8.9 earthquake. We have three cities left. Which of them will survive the most powerful earthquake? All right, here comes the magnitude from 9 to the maximum possible on the Earth, 9.5. All the buildings on the New York mainland are completely destroyed. And Manhattan sinks into the water. In Moscow, violent tremors and deep fractures make one part of the city slide under the other. Half of Russia's capital will melt into boiling magma beneath the Earth's crust. In Tehran, additional areas are being demolished and all plumbing and communications are breaking down. In this battle, Tehran turned out to be the most prepared. There are survivors in the city who will be able to see the last earthquake on Earth. Imagine going outside and seeing high-rise buildings collapse in a matter of seconds. Trees are wrenched from the ground and tossed like salad. Cars are thrown many meters up into the air. What's going on? You're witnessing the earthquake that will destroy the Earth. Its magnitude is 19. You watch as the fractures on the Earth are growing larger and deeper. Our planet is literally being torn apart. Now, instead of the Earth, fragments and space debris orbit the Sun.
The maximum earthquake that can occur on our planet is half the magnitude that's fatal for us. But what if people accidentally rock the Earth just a little too much? At the FIFA World Cup Final in 2018, fans in Mexico were so excited about their team's victory that they jumped to such an extent that seismographs in Mexico City detected magnitude 2 fluctuations. What will happen if the entire world population gathers in one location and jumps simultaneously? Write your thoughts in the comments and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.